My name is Barbara Hawkins Cleveland, um, a resident of South Bend, Indiana. And my age is, <laughs> listen, currently now, let's see, I think I hit the big five five. Yeah. Uh, at, let's see, when my 50th birthday, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And let's see, hmm, I wasn't, I was surprised at the diagnosis, but yet I wasn't because I had felt something anyway. And, uh, you know, you're always hopeful that it's, it's, it's not, but um, I felt something. I asked a friend to check me out, and she did. did you know, we did that clinical thing, and um, then it went right into the doctor coming in, and then right into a biopsy, and then from there, you know, you get that news. So that was it. My life today, I think, is um, is more more fulfilled, for the simple fact that I I've always been a person to 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 find joy and laughter in things and the beauty in things, but I I look at it now more on a deeper level. Um, when I was going through my treatment uh, treatments and stuff, I found you know it necessary for me to be creative. So I, I joined the museum and I took classes, pottery classes, and you know got in there and kind of created some things, and um, let go of I guess whatever it was I was experiencing, and I'm still not able to put that to words, those feelings, um, but put that energy toward that. So now it's like I'm I'm living my life, and it's, and it's very full, but I'm enjoying my family. Even even more, I, I, can't, I guess it's kind of like optimized. I'm enjoying them more. I, I see the importance of telling them how well a job they're doing, uh, and keeping them encouraged, and, and 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 making all the basketball games and the recitals and everything like that. It's it's it's, it's really fun. It's really fun. You know, I don't. I didn't have a fear. I didn't have a fear when I heard those words. It was like okay. It was just okay, okay. So now, what do I do to uh, uh, to assure my survival? You know, I was more or less okay. Those words came. I was already on the next step. What do I need to do to assure that I'm going to come out on the other side of this thing, um, surviving? You know, being being whole, better, even better than what I that I was when I went into it. Um, I have a strong family history of, of breast cancer. My family was very supportive, and I think through through them um, and our love that we have together, you know, as a family, even prior to that, that the unity that helped me draw their strength and find new strengths within myself. So it wasn't it wasn't like a death sentence to me because I never looked at it like that. Even though I've had several family members to you know to, to go on and not survive this. And I have two that currently are survivors. One is like 30 year survivors and one is a 10 year. So, you know, you, you draw your strength from that. I, I found things within myself that I could draw on and pull up out of myself that I, I kind of knew they were there, but never really tapped into them. And I just, I just knew that I was gonna be all right. I knew I was gonna be all right. The thing that always comes to my mind is survive, survive, survive. That one word, you know, we, there are survivors out there, strong and many. It has made me more aware of my time. I think it's, it's valuable. Uh, I don't like wasting time. I don't let other people waste my time. Um, I've, like I say, I find things that, that I can create, that I can be a part of. Um, I think it's important to be a part of a, a group where you can can learn and share your feelings and let those let those out and and you learn things from it you know from other people just listening and talking and seeing the experiences that they're going through and you say oh wow I didn't know that oh I didn't I didn't experience that okay well maybe I should look for look for that or should I look for that you know I don't want to look for that <laughs> that you know so I don't know it's just hmm. It has made me a better person, that's for sure, because I'm, in, I'm involved in more organizations. Um, I have an inward need to, to express to women that it's not a death sentence. You, there are survivors. You have to take care of yourself. 
you have to put yourself first. Um, we, have, we as women have a tendency of always putting everybody first, but you have to stop that. You have to change the way you think. You have to say, okay, well, what about me? Without me, this won't work. So if you, I guess if you look at it on, on that, that note, then you're more likely to say, okay, I need to stop. I need to go exercise. I need to eat today. I need to take time to have breakfast. I need to take time to do this. Or maybe I need to cut back on something that I'm, I overindulge in, you know. Um, but you, you, you just have to stop and just take care of yourself. What that's, advice would you give them? That's something I notice I run into, too, people being afraid of seeking uh, medical attention. Um, to me, that, that, that's not even real. That's not even conceivable, you know, because in this day and age with the technology that we have now, if, we, if, if, I, if I had gotten breast cancer, say, uh, 40 years ago, <clears throat> then I might have been more, more of afraid. Uh, but now, with the technology and the things that are out there and that they can find things as minute as, as, as a pinhead, and when that is when you're most likely to to be uh, your your cure rate and success rates are are, are, are higher, then why wouldn't you want to go to the doctor? Why wouldn't you want to to express that to your physician? Um, I'd run, not walk, to to call to to the telephone and, or and to the doctor's office to say, hey, I've noticed something. Can you check this out? I think that women should take the date of their birth, you know, and have 12 birthdays a year, and take that date and go in the ladies' room and strip to the bare essentials and look in the mirror at themselves and say, and see every, every avenue, every minute little thing on their body, whatever mole, whatever they have, you know, and touch themselves and see, and, and see any, any changes in yourself. So that way you're more aware when things do change, that you can be on top of them right away. Why wouldn't you want to want to do that for yourself, so that you can be here for your daughters, you know, and for your granddaughters, and express that to them, and and, and stress that to them. It's good to go in there and touch yourself. I mean, it's 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 good. It's it's, it's healthy to go in there and look at yourself and see where and if anything's changed on your body. So that way, you're always aware, you know, when so when things happen. You, you know, to, to, like you said, I say, to run to the doctor, not walk, run, and say, hey, something's changed here. Can you check this out for me? And, and sometimes it, it, it may not be anything, but it's good to know. It's just good to know. It's, it's a comfort. It's relaxing. It gives you peace. You can function. You can, you can go to that next step. Whatever else comes to you, you can, you can conquer it because you have that um, confidence. You have that confidence, that inner confidence within yourself. You say, okay, I'm on this. I'm on this. I'm not letting anything slide past me. I'm, I'm on this. This is my life, and this is what I got to give. Good job. Good job. Wow. Okay. Cool.